Hello, and thanks for joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Now, as you know, we're here on the grounds of City Hall. There's usually a big celebration for the 4th of July. Sadly, this year there won't be, but that doesn't mean that Liz and I aren't going to get you in the holiday spirit. That's right, Maria and I, we're having sort of our own social distancing parade right now to get into this That's spirit. That's right. Maria, you're always here at the 4th of July. I'm back in Boston. Thousands of people show up here. Thousands of people. It's so much fun. There are booths. There are fun things to eat, especially the kettle corn. And everybody gathers and we visit. And it is just such a fun day for sure. So we thought it'd be really nice to just share a trip down memory lane of the 4th of July celebrations in the years past. So we're going to show you highlights. So let's get this 4th of July party started. Let's check it out. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still This is a great country fair. It brings people to, to the area to see how beautiful it is. And it, it reminds our residents mostly that this modestly run city, if you just look at our city hall, and you can see we're operating out of World War II bun bunker, they know that they're getting a lot of bang for the buck. And we're celebrating 240 years of freedom, of declaring our liberty, and it's just so important that we all remember why it is that we're here. It's an opportunity for people to come to the city, find out what the city is about, and actually get to know each other and have a good time. That's the whole point. All year long, it's work, work, work. This is a chance to have a good time on the city. What is some of your favorite 4th of July traditions? Well, obviously, the favorite one is this hat. <laughs> I've had that now for some 15 years, and it's become something that attaches itself automatically. This isn't the first time you've been to the city celebration. Why is it important to come here? I think it's important because first you see lots of lots of friends that you've known over the years. And, you know, we used to have a barbecue, but now that the kids are gone away from home, so we can't do that. So this is kind of, you know, replacing it. And it's just nice to hear the music, to see all the people that come out, and to see the big crowd that shows up, which is awesome. Is this your first time at the celebration here today? No, this is not my first time. I have been here a lot. Like, I was here last year and two years after that. Like, yeah, I've been here a few times. And what has been your favorite part of the day so far? Um, we haven't done anything yet. We haven't done anything yet, but I'm planning to go on the giant slide. Yeah, me too. I think the funnest part is, like, deciding what we should go on first. What have you guys enjoyed the most about being here today? Well, the most is running into all of our friends and <laughs> seeing everyone that we know from school and around the neighborhood. That's been good. But um, Piper, what'd you like? I think we like the pony rides. <laughs> Piper, pony did you rides like the pony rides? What I loved most 
is the swings. What have you guys been doing here so far today? Uh, we started with some rides. We did the spinning dragon ride and then the train ride. And then we came over to the arts and crafts booth for the kids and they had a lot of fun. What did you do at the booth? Uh, I made a hat and a wand. And is there anything else you really want to do here before you leave? I think we'd like to do the petting zoo. Just getting out and seeing everyone having a good time. <laughs> Looks like everyone's enjoying themselves. Got some uh, interesting things to look at over here and family time. A lot it's of just good. Pride. Yeah. So it's always such a fun event that the city puts on and really brings the community out, which is, let's face it, what this community is about. Absolutely. Like I always say, you know, Ranch Palos Verdes is a very large city by population and by geography, but, you know, these kind of events, this and Well of a Day in particular, uh, really give it that hometown, small town feel where neighbor can talk to neighbor. I've seen a couple people already that I haven't seen in a long time. And, and that's, that's what makes RPV special, and it's, uh, it's great. Love being here. Yeah, you know, and it does give everybody the opportunity to come out and uh, meet the new pol uh, captain of the police department. Just uh, really kind of just network with everybody here. And that's so true. And our staff is excellent. They do a great job putting this stuff on. And they mingle. And like you said, our, you know, how many times do you get to mingle with your police chief? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a great place to be. And, and I'm sure we'll have outstanding attendance today, too. Now, okay, now, Jerry, all the festivities going on, we have to ask you, what's your favorite thing about Fourth of July and your favorite Everything to eat, like, what do you most look forward to? You always ask that. As somebody always asks that. You know what? <laughs> I think I think a, a cheeseburger, an all-American cheeseburger, is always number one on my list, followed closely by a hot dog. I don't eat too many hot dogs. Always reminds me of sporting events, as you and I have talked go. about. Yeah, but works. it's uh, that, that's probably it as far as the food goes. But the special thing, you know, I always try and reflect a little bit as I get a little yeah. older. You know, you think about... You know what 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 people do over history and you think about what what the patriots did back then as far as you know they basically risked their lives many of them died they they risked their fortunes they risked their stature and uh, for something they believed in and i think we you know setting aside all the tumult that's out there right now i think most people in public service um, do it for the right reason and try and make america better as i always say we're not perfect but we're the best there has ever been and we're always trying so God bless America, right? We are here with Councilman Eric Alegria. Eric, this is such a fun event. You and I have talked about this. So much fun to come out and be with the community and got your family out here today. What are you most looking forward to? Well, I'm most looking forward to the games and just talking to the, the folks. Uh, this is all about community. And actually, it's uh, it's pretty early. It's about 11.30, and it's pretty full already. There's quite a few people here. I expect a good turnout, lots of things to do for all ages. So come on out if you haven't uh, haven't done this in the past. So. And I see your kids are like running around. They're having fun yeah. and enjoying it. Yes, they're having a great time. Although I walked them through the games to get here, and they, they were wondering why we had to go and do the formalities. So there, I, I have some... I have some uh, payback to do for them oh, in the next couple of hours, I think, to get them out to the games and yeah, yeah, make sure they have fun. Is there so. something uh, particular they're looking forward to, the egg toss, the watermelon roll? Oh, yes, both my kids participated in the watermelon roll last year, oh, wow. so they're looking for a redo. They're, they're, <laughs> looking to, they're looking to be victorious this year. So. Nice. Now, tell me what you like to eat the most on 4th of July. Uh, most uh, cheeseburgers. I think cheeseburgers are my go-to. I haven't seen them today, but uh, you know ribs. I'm a big fan of ribs. I shared that as well in the past. But well, you still have, you have a few hours, so yes. get yourself ready. Two Gerda. meals, right? Yeah, Two meals exactly. at that, so I can probably fit both of those in today. <laughs> Very good. That's my goal. Mayor Pro Tem John Cruikshank. John, so much fun to be at Fourth of July. How much fun are you having today? I mean, this is one of my favorite days of the year. Um, I always tell my pie eating contest story that I did win one year here, and I always tell people the secret is make sure you get lemon meringue pie. That's it. See, you're already giving away all the secrets, John. Well, I mean, that's I'm a public official. I'm supposed to help the public out with things that they're doing as much as I am capable of doing. It's very true, very true. You know, we talk about the community coming together at events like this, and it's so very important in this city, I think. Um, just talk about why the city makes sure to put this on the calendar. 
Well, I mean, in all seriousness, it is the birthday of our country, and it means everything to everyone here in this country. And so, you know, we have an opportunity to, to reflect back on the amazing things that our forefathers did for this country to create the freedom that we have every day of the week. And so I'm really proud that our city does this event and it's great to be a part of it. Very true. Okay, now the most important question of the day is what is your favorite food on the 4th of July? Okay, after watching Joey Chestnut eat 71 hot dogs for I don't know how many times he's won the yellow belt, um, I'm going to go hot dogs this year. We're adding up the tally, so I think right now hot dogs is like at four and cheeseburgers at two, so hot dogs winning out. Good. No, they definitely should win out. I mean, there's nothing more American than a good old hot dog, and I'm not a Nathan's necessarily fan. I just like hot dogs. Dodger dogs, maybe? Dodger dog. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Dodger dogs are good. Now, Ken. We have to ask everybody today, what is your favorite food to eat on the 4th of July? Polish dog. Okay. Now I'm Polish. What else can I eat? <laughs> you know, we're taking a poll, and the, the hot dog is winning out today. Well, I'm not sure. Hot dog? That, that's ersatz. No, come on. <laughs> you got to have a Polish dog. A good, a good kielbasa with sauerkraut and mustard, right? Very good. There you go. Very We are now at the Rancho Palos Verdes Emergency Preparedness Booth. Tracy, tell us what you're sharing with the residents today here at the 4th of July. Well, we're sharing a little bit of everything when it comes to emergency preparedness. We're, um, we have some things that we're giving away that are part of like what we call a, a, a get-together kit, a little something to get them started, you know, in their emergency preparedness kits. Um, some of the brochures that we have as handouts, their guides as to um, checklists for what you need, mainly food and water, and then each checklist goes down from there, different things that they need to prepare their families um, and their, um, their homes. Um, because we like to think about first responders, a lot of times, if we have something really drastic happen, a disaster, it may take them three or four days to get around to the area that you're in. So if you can prepare yourself in your home, that's what we're looking for. That's the most important thing. And how many people are actually prepared in case of emergency? That is a great question. Um, that's something that's on my list of things to do. Eventually, I would like to um, survey the Rancho Palos Verdes community and maybe start it out small with surveying just how much food and water, extra food and water do you have on hand? Do you have enough for seven to 10 days? Um, we're thinking of making that a project a little bit further out into the future, not too far. Um, so uh, right now, it's hard to say. We can only, the people that we talk to at events like this and they give us what they have um, and what they're prepared with, we just have to take their word for it. We don't really have anything on paper yet, so, yeah. It's interesting you say you start them out with little things so that maybe they will go home and add to the kit. What kind of things are you giving out today? Well, the things that we're giving out is um, things like what we have here, hand sanitizer, okay? Um, in case the water lines are out or broken or whatever's happening, you want to make sure that you try to stay as sanitary as possible. Um, in that situation, there's some emergency blankets for warmth. Um, we also give out the um, light sticks here, um, which instead of some people um, still want to use candles for some reason, but we really encourage people not to do that because of the danger of tipping over and starting fires. So the light sticks for those. And then last but not least, we have um, hot and cold um, packs. And what they are is they're reusable. Put them in the freezer for a cold pack for a bump or a bruise, or you can put it in your microwave for anything less than 20 seconds, and it turns into a hot pack. So just little things like this. And then the brochures, like I said, that we give out with the do's and don'ts and tips and things like that just to get them started on their own kit if they don't have something going already. It's always such a great gift too to fill a backpack for somebody and give it as a birthday gift or a Christmas gift or, or any gift because um, you know having that backpack could be very beneficial. Yes, yes, yes. The backpack that we have, actually, it's down at the end of the table, um, and it's good for three days. One person, it could keep someone alive for three days. Um, we have them at the um, PVIC, Point Vicente Interpretive Center. Um, it's a great, great deal. They're only $40, and it's really $60 worth of stuff that you're getting in there to keep someone. I have one in my car. I keep it in the trunk. I keep it in my office, one at home. So that's always a good thing. PVIC sells those at the gift shop. Now, it is 4th of July, so we have to ask you, what is your favorite 4th of July food? 
My favorite Fourth of July food, I have to say, I love hot dogs. I love the hot dogs, yep, I do. <laughs> for the freedom that we have. We have more freedoms than any other nation. And at a time when we may be so divided, we know that we have the right of free speech and liberty. Just happy Fourth of July. I'm so grateful that our founding members of the, the city were forward thinking 
and incorporated when they did because we live in paradise. Happy 4th of July. <laughs> we are now joined by Dan Trotner and your official title is? The Deputy Director for Recreation and Parks. Okay, and they have a lot of fun over there. I'm gonna tell you that for sure, but you, so much work you put in, especially in an event like this. How long does it take you to put this together? This this event is, um, we start planning about a year out. Every, every year that we finish up, in a few weeks, we're gonna end up doing a debrief, go over what worked well, uh, what we want to improve on, and uh, what are some new aspects that we could bring into the next year. Uh, we, we have a great service provider in Bell Services. He's uh, He really brings all the muscle and the uh, experience to putting together these large special events, and we're able to then um, add to it with our wonderful staff, uh, both Public Works and the Recreation Parks Department. A lot of work goes into this year round, but um, yeah, we're, we're always excited to uh, see ways that we could bring some new elements to the next year. I mean, you do such a great job with Well of a Day as well, but this one I think is special because it is America's birthday party, and you do such a great job with all the red, white, and blue, and just making sure everybody's having a good time. Yeah, we're, we, we love uh, integrating a lot of patriotic themes into our events and um, really capitalize on, on the, you know, this, this great city and uh, capitalize on Independence Day. Very true. Okay, now the, the question of the day for everybody is, what is your favorite Fourth of July food? Uh, I'm a sweets kind of guy, so I would say the ap apple pie. Apple pie and uh, vanilla ice cream on, on uh, Independence Day is always a, a fan favorite. Love that answer. A man after my own heart. The sweets are good. Now, how about the funnel cake over there, Dan? Uh, funnel cake and also the, the uh, kettle corn. You know, it, when we're setting up early in the day and then the kettle corn starts to get going, you really say, okay, yep, it's 4th of July. We are with one of our very favorite people here in Rancho Palos Verdes, Mona Dill. How many years? So I've been here 22 years, Maria. All right, 22 years. This is her last official 4th of July, but you know you'll be back here to celebrate anyway. How could I not want to come back every year for this kind of fun? Seriously. <laughs> you know what? You have just done such a magnificent job all these years. What's the secret to really putting great events on like you always have? You know, I think really the secret of events is you have to love events and you have to love recreation and you have to love people and I think you just have to keep a smile on your face and even when things don't quite go the way you want them to do, you just keep smiling and just say, how can I help? And I think really that's the secret. Pretty much everything, right? Well, I, think, I, I think you're probably right on that one. And this one always goes off so well. So many people in the community come out for this. I think by the afternoon, it's just standing room only here. You know, this is a fun event because I just love that it's, it really is a community event. I mean, pie eating contest. How often do you get to do that? And watermelon roll. It's so cute to see all those great little kids. So I just like that it's really family centered and it's not all about, you know, huge bands and kind of craziness. It's just kind of a good hometown place to be. Yeah, just have a lot of fun and just right. enjoy the 4th of July festivities. Okay, Mona, the question of the day is <laughs> your favorite 4th of July food. Oh my, well I have a lot of those going on. So in my family we have a tradition every July 4th. We always read the preamble to the Constitution and then we have to eat only hamburgers and barbecue potato chips and apple pie and that's all we do. That's it. <laughs> I love it. That is awesome. All right, Mona, we're going to let you uh, get back to work one last time. But right. again, she'll be back to celebrate. So it's not really goodbye. Happy July 4th. <laughs> you are paying Tell us a little bit about your booth here today. So I'm doing uh, classic American desserts. Um, I've been a pastry chef for 10 years, and um, a lot of the recipes are family recipes that are really personal to uh, my childhood, and I wanted to just share that with the community. Um, so I do cookies and pies and cupcakes, and I'm just so excited to be here. Now the 4th of July would not be complete without, well, a little bit of competition. Let's take a look.
Well, as you can see, the city celebration is so much fun, Liz. It was so fun going down memory lane. I know, great traditions. What else do you love doing on the 4th of July besides coming here? Well, after here, I'm always at a Dodger game or an Angel game, so we're looking forward to when that comes back too, for sure. Nothing more American than baseball. One of my favorite traditions is, first of all, blasting Philip Sousa music, get that patriotic vibe going in my house. That's always and fun. And making my kids some patriotic pancakes mm. with whipped cream and strawberry and blueberries. Very sweet day. Love Sounds the 4th good. July. With that, happy 4th, everyone. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. And I'm Maria Sorrell, and we'll see you around the peninsula.